fantastic Christmas day yesterday. We hope that Boxing Day is even better for all of you. to right. Rock rolls it down the left channel for Ben Wayne. Gets it across into the centre. And Morgan Whitaker puts our girl in front. The Gillespie from the back has picked out the run of Kesler Hayden. Keeper can't make up what he might want to do. Yes. Kesler Hayden has put it just wide. Three weeks on from a two-all draw in the Welsh capital, Argyle and Cardiff City meet again, this time at Home Park. Since then, we've seen a new head coach arrive, four players come in, progression in the FA Cup and a swell of anticipation among the Argyle fans. Today is Ian Foster's first league game here at the Theatre of Greens. Hello and good afternoon or good morning or good evening, depending on where in the world you are tuning in to Argyle TV's pre-match show. I am Erin Black and can Argyle get their first win of the season since the departure of Stephen Schumacher? They have a big, uh, big and a good chance today against a Cardiff side who have lost three of their last four games. And remember, Argyle don't often lose here at home park. Lots to come before now and kick off as always, but if you haven't already made time, please do make sure you get your match passes for today's game. They can be found over on the website, pafc.co.uk. And helping me through today's game is a man who's actually scored against Cardiff. Mr. Ian Stonebridge, or Dr. Ian Stonebridge, I should say now. I'll let your fairy. <laughs> it was January 2001, 23 years ago now, that Ian Stonebridge uh, from a Brian McGlinchey cross scored a goal made by Argyle TV. I mean, Ian just talked me through that moment because the people at home will be able to have a little look at it. Yeah, if they can see, the footage is a little bit grainy, isn't it? It's quite a few years ago now. Uh, no, Brian, fantastic cross in and not much to do really on the end of that. But yeah, you always knew with, with Brian uh, rampaging down that left-hand side, there was always likely to be a good cross coming in. So yeah, great great to score in that no, game. No, I right? like it when we have stuff like that to show and then the, <laughs> the scorer himself stood next to me. It, it adds an extra level, especially, you know, with Cardiff being our opposition today as well. I think it's safe to say that the team would like to replicate a goal and possibly more than one goal against Cardiff here this afternoon and get that win. Yeah, definitely. I think it's it's important. Both teams arguably not in, in the kind of best of form at the moment. So Argyle will really want to make sure that they can uh, you know, start to really make Home Park a, a fortress again that, that will help see them you know, stay, stay safely away perhaps from that relegation zone and, and start making their way up the league. Yeah, and, you know, it's a good opportunity to get a win today. There has been lots of changes, new players, you know, coaches, etc. Of course, you know, relatively recently installed new manager here at Argyle. It almost feels like since the last home game, we've almost got like a brand new squad coming in. Yeah, it almost feels like a, you know, the start of a new season yeah. as opposed to, you know, a time in January. So exciting times, I think, for the, for the club, clearly... Some of the departures disappointing, some of them perhaps unexpected, um, but at the same time, the, the club's moved pretty decisively to, to make those replacements, and I think they've shown you know, their, their ambition to 
to really continue to compete in this league and to yeah. you know help the new head coach uh, in his in his quest to make a good start. Yeah, and you know of course it's always sad when you lose players in that loan window. Um, you know, like Azaz is just one name we could mention. But do you think with that, you know, one hand takes away, the other hand gives? Because it's quite a nice opportunity in the middle of the season for fans to have you know some new, fresh, exciting players to look forward to as well. Yeah, I think I think that's great. First of all, so yeah, from the from the supporters' perspective, the, the the chance to see fresh fresh blood, as it were, to in front of them here here at home park in particular. But also, I think now now other players at that stage in their career will look to see Argyle as a really good place to come to develop themselves. You know, particularly Finners as, um, but you know, Kundal and Kaiser Hayden as well come down here, play plenty of games, yeah. um, and it's really advanced their careers. Argyle have benefited from that. They have benefited from that, and I'm sure the new players coming in will will be thinking along the same lines. Yeah, and we are certainly going to see some of those new players today. Uh, before we get to that, very quickly, as well as the usual build-up on the pre-match show, we will also be joined later on by legendary striker Tommy Tynan. So make sure you do stick around for that. It's going to be very exciting. Let's take a look at the teams now. Then for you. As I mentioned, few new names in there, and we've also got uh, Morgan Whitaker taking up the captain's position as well. Yeah, I think great to see someone who's clearly has, uh, set a great example with his performances and his goal haul so far this season. So that, I'm sure the, the fans will react well to that, and, and hopefully we'll... We'll, we'll see a great performance from, from Morgan again today. Yeah, absolutely. So just reading through them then for you, we've got Connor Hazard, Barley Mumba, Dan Scar, Ryan Hardy, Morgan Whitaker, Mikel Miller, Alfie Devine, Darko JB, Brendan Galloway, Ashley Phillips and Adam Forshaw. I mean, of course, JB, uh, Devine, Phillips, Forshaw, a couple of them we've seen, you know, in the last game. Um, for sure, in particular, brand new. You know, only signed him a couple of days ago, and here he is in the starting lineup. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's really interesting um, from the, the head coach and the uh, and the other coach's point of view that they've made the decision to really start with that that fresh team, um, put them straight in there, as it were. Great, great opportunity in front of the home park crowd to to get their first uh, home appearance for some of them, as you say, and and the first appearance for Argyle uh, for others as well. And yeah, I think it, it'll be great to see them out there. We'll start to see that. Um, the shape and perhaps the the new new approach that maybe in Foster will look to, to tweak the formation slightly. So yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how they set up, and I'm sure all those new players will be, you know, itching to get out there and put a, a good performance in. Yeah, I mean, Ian Foster certainly seems keen to bring you know this brand new energy into the club, um, you know, which we've seen from his last uh, you know couple of um, steps out. Do you think there's going to be you know a lot of changes in terms of formation from him? I think when you look at the, the names that, that are put out there today, we're, we're probably looking at a back three, which mm -hmm. is something that Argyle have used you know, extensively across the last two seasons. Yeah. Uh, perhaps JB and Forshaw sitting in front as, as kind of defensive midfielders, looking to provide that, that solid base for our attacking players to work from. You know, it'd be, and it'll be really interesting to see Devine and Whitaker, I think, behind Hardy. Hopefully they can start to develop that relationship that's really important. You know, we've seen some really you know, fantastic relationships amongst our, our forward players over the last couple of, couple of seasons. And mm -hmm. it'll be great to see Devine hit the ground running and, and start to you know, combine with Morgan Whitaker and, and yeah. Ryan Hardy up front today. Do you think you know, what Ian Foster is doing here potentially gives Argyle a little bit of an edge? Because, yes, while other clubs might be familiar with these players individually, bringing them you know, straight in, putting them together, of course, under the new management as well, people might not necessarily know what to expect from Argyle at the minute. No, and I think you know, clearly a, a strategy of those signings has been that they're players that, that Foster has worked with before. And that means they, they will already have an understanding of perhaps the tactical responsibilities, what he wants from players in those certain positions across the pitch. And when you're coming to a new club, I think that that really gives you a bit of a head start and, and really helps you to hit the ground running. And, and hopefully we'll see the, the kind of fruits of that today. Yeah, well, absolutely. It would be fantastic to see Argyle get off to a great home start here under the management of Ian Foster. And, of course, it'll only be a couple of hours until we know for sure how it's all gone. Let's have a look at the Cardiff side now, though, because they are our opposition that stand in our way today. All of the names up there on the screen for you to have a little look at. Um, Ian, you know, how how threatening do you think Cardiff are? Are you bearing in mind we played them relatively recently? Yeah, I think that, that game was probably a fairly even contest. Both teams maybe felt they, they could have come away with three points. Um, and despite, as we've mentioned already, but neither team really being in, in a rich vein of form at the moment, Cardiff's league position does does really show that they've got they've got quality. 
maybe they've suffered recently through through injuries and perhaps a la slight lack of depth in their squad. But they've certainly got some dangerous players and, and Argyle will need to make sure they've got that, that solid defensive base to work from today. Yeah, I mean, of course, people looking at that lineup there will notice, you know, names like Adam, uh, um, Aaron Ramsey, who's injured. There, you know, there's a few gaps in there, aren't there, which could play to Argyle's advantage. Yeah, I think when you look at their, their kind of top goal scorers list, there's, there's not a name that particularly jumps out. You know, the top scorers um, not in, in the starting 11 today. Um, and, and that for Argyle means they just perhaps need to be wary of, of players you know, across the pitch there. The Grant and Tanner, who are likely to be part of a, of a front three today. Ruben Colwell, who's a, obviously a, a product of Cardiff City's academy. You know, so he's got a real real tie and a real passion for the club. He's a player from midfield that Argyle will need to watch today. Yeah, and you know, Callum Robinson on 49 goals in the championship. Um, I'm looking off the pencil sheet that came out extra early for the fixtures, but like you said, not in the lineup at all. So, I mean, hopefully this bodes well for Argyle in the sense that they're coming in here with kind of half a fresh squad um, against Cardiff's one who's kind of littered with a couple of injuries and some absences and we're at home. So, so far, it seems like the needle is, you know, possibly tilting in our favour. Yeah, I think when you see a player like Robinson missing from the, from the squad as a whole, there's no doubt it gives a slight boost, but, but Argyle, I'm sure, will be focused on their game plan, focused on, you know, carrying out the instructions and the, and the approach of, of Ian Foster. And again, hopefully we can see a positive performance. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Cardiff have conceded seven goals in their last two matches and they're just three points off the playoffs. So that's also, you know, while conceding seven goals is, is good for us, they are um, obviously, you know, significantly better table-wise. Yeah, I think in, in recent weeks, we've perhaps seen a few of the, the teams that have been you know, deep in relegation trouble, start to put a few results together. And I think, you know, their their recent loss against against Sheffield Wednesday perhaps shows the, the benefits. Sheffield Wednesday recently changed their manager and perhaps, you know, um, getting the, some of the benefits of that. So Cardiff's league position at the moment in their form looks slightly false. But as we say, it, it does show that across the season as a whole, they've actually done quite well so yes. far. Yeah, absolutely. But things might change for them when they face us here at home, of course. A very formidable place, Home Park, on a good day. And it is a good day, Ian, because I must point out, for the first time in what feels like about a 100 Argyle TV games to me, it's not raining here on the pitch. <laughs> no, it's brilliant. It's got a slight, slight chill in the air, but slightly warmer than the last couple of days have been, certainly. So it um, be interesting to see what happens with the wind. I think it's, <laughs> it's gusting around. We're trying to watch the corner flags a little bit. It's kind of difficult to tell which uh, direction it's coming in. So. Yeah. something that the defenders and goalkeepers might have to be slightly wary of yeah. today. Yeah, I probably jinxed it now, but <laughs> fingers crossed we have a, a nice, clear and not super windy day, as Ian mentioned, for a good game of football here at Home Park. Well, you are watching Argyle TV with Cardiff, and you can get your match passes now. There's nothing like the start to a new season. The energy, the anticipation, the expectation. You know that buzz in the air. You can feel it. It's going to be our year. It's going to be different this time. It needs to be for all of us. The emotions of the game get to us all. I know all about that. But whether out on the pitch, in the stands or on the sidelines, we've all got to do better at all levels. No more surrounding refs, no more abuse, no more intimidation, no more discrimination. Leave the pitch to the players. And those offensive chants, you know the ones. There's never a place for them in the game we love. That beautiful feeling at the start of a new season. Don't ruin it. Let's keep it that way, together. Whether you win, lose or draw, let's make sure that this season is different. We all do it for the love of the game. Let's show our pride and passion in the right way. We all love football, so let's protect the game. Now, you probably would have heard of Forever Green, which is Argyle's new initiative celebrating every player who's represented our club over the years. Well, it officially launches today. And at halftime, the first crop of icons will be inducted here on Argyle TV. But we've got a little sneak preview into those five players voted by the Argyle fans to become Forever Green icons.
Hodges, Frio, give it a challenge again, Hodges, they're all very compact there, Frio, oh he's going to go through on his own, he's broken the defence, 2-0, that's it, our goal are up, David Frio, all of a sudden the broke for ball broke for him, and the new manager in places. It's gone in! Would you believe it? Smash and grab from Plymouth Argyle! It's their first goal in over 500 minutes of football. And will it be enough to give Paul Mariner a first victory in charge at the third time of asking? Will Paul Some absolute legends there on the video. And I'm very pleased to say that I am joined by one of them now, Mr. Tommy Tynan, who I was just pointing out, we got the matching coat memo, which is very good because we both look smart, ready for you on Argyle TV. Tommy, thank you so much for being with us on Argyle TV. How, how are you, first of all? Yes, I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, yeah my health's good. Um, yeah. yeah um, it's a pleasure to be back at Argyle. Been looked after very, very well, especially by Paul Hart. So, yes, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, well, it's a pleasure for us to have you here. You know, we can see people on the sidings already lining up to have photos taken with you. How does it feel to be a forever green icon? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a great honour. It's an absolute great honour. And, and the nice thing about it is that the fans actually vote for you. Yeah. And they're the people that come every week, year in, year out. And when they vote for you, it's absolutely superb. Yeah, I think that's a nice touch, isn't it? Because you know that... Your, you know, what you achieved at the club is, you know, being reflected back by the fans themselves. Yes, it is. And the one thing, you know, players come and go and whatever, but the fans are always constant. Mm -hmm. and, and when you are voted by the fans, it's an absolute great, great honour. Yeah, well, we know, you know, the, the 12th shirt is for the Green Army, of course. So yes. we, wouldn't, we wouldn't have a squad without them. Um, you know, Tommy... What do you think of the idea as well, you know, recognising all of these players from all different generations across Argyle's history? Well, I think they should be, you know, I mean, we're, we're, we're now called the Forever Greens, but these players that are playing today in, in sort of 10, 15 years, they'll be recognised, you know, and they should be. I mean, it's very, very nice that people do not forget about, and don't forget, football has, has come on in leaps and bounds than it was years and years and years ago, and the modern game... Um, I, I was just on the beginning of the modern game, but today, these players now, and they'll be recognised in the future, and so they should be. Yeah, and of course, you know, we've put an official stamp on it with Forever Green as a title, but I'm sure for you as a player with your history at the club, you probably you must have felt like one already. Yes, I did, yeah. I mean, and I've always been looked after by the yeah. fans here. But it, you know, the interesting thing is, a few years ago, people didn't realise who Jack Leslie was. Yeah. And like Jack Leslie has now become a forever green, you know, and there's modern young 
players that know who he is now, and it and it's the way it should be. Yeah, it's it's absolutely fantastic work. Everything that's gone on with that campaign in particular. Now you were in Group C, and it's important to mention some of the names that were alongside you: Paul Mariner, Michael Evans, and Kevin Hodges. I mean, that's some company. Yes, it is. I mean, Paul calls it the the uh, the group of death. <laughs> um, but um, I, I've just mentioned something in there. I don't know whether it was true or not. I mean, but you know this. The, the way they did the voting and whatever, mm. at every football club there is someone that stands out. Yeah. And when you look at Kevin Hodges, who's played over 500 consecutive games, yeah. not games, consecutive, he shouldn't need to be voted for. He should be in the icons. Yeah. You know, and it's I don't like I say I don't know how they did it, but. It was, it was, I mentioned it in there, and there's certain people, I mean, Jack Leslie, like you mentioned, Mike Bickle, Kevin Hodges, these people shouldn't even be voted for, they should be in there, and that's it. Yeah, names that almost kind of transcend, you yeah, know, the, the club like itself. Like I said, I mean, Jack Leslie, and until, until a few years ago, I, I, I never, I'm not being disrespectful, but I didn't know who Jack Leslie was, mm. but now you know, and yeah. it should be, yeah, and you should be. I mean, I knew Mike Bickle personally, you know, and, and the one thing about this club, and it is, it's always been a family club, it's always been, and people do not forget you. Mm. Well, uh, I think hopefully as well, through something like this, like you said, for maybe newer fans or fans of a particular generation that aren't familiar with some of the players, this will then give them an opportunity to, you know, perhaps learn more about them and, and you know, give them the respect that they deserve. Yes, it is, and, and you know, I mean, like I say, you, you, there, is, there is many, many more players that eventually will become icons and whatever, but I'm not being disrespectful to the people that did this, but every player that plays for all girls should just be an icon and that's it. I mean, you can't say fairer than that. I think that's fair enough. Once you're in the green, you're in the, you know, you're in the exactly green, right. aren't you? We know, seeing as you're here though, I would like to touch on your career um, a little bit. You know, promotion in 86, FA Cup runs, great time for you, right? Yes, I, I mean, luckily I've been, in, um, I've been in the teams that I've done quite well with, uh, <laughs> With um, Plymouth, yeah. you know we got promotion, uh, FA Cup semi-final. Uh, just missed out on getting to the then League One, which would be the Premiership mm -hmm. now. So uh, yeah, I've been lucky, and we've uh, we had some very very good sides. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. How nice is it to be able to come back to home park and you know take a little trip down memory lane? Well, it, 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 it's not memory lane for me. It's just <laughs> I just I just love. You know, ever since I've been here. The, I'm from Liverpool, yeah. and these people, the, the fans... Oh, here's me. Pilgrim Pete. <laughs> Pilgrim Pete, we're not on you, we're watching clips of Tommy in action. Come back. <laughs> the, the fans have been absolutely brilliant to me, and uh, um, a lot of, the, a lot of the, the people that I know, all Argyle fans, yeah. I'm now janerised. <laughs> We like to hear it. <laughs> Even though the accent's still there, you have officially been Janerized. Yes, of I course, have, yeah. of course. And finally, today's game, looking forward to it. How do you think Argyle are going to get on? Um, Argyle's home form yep. is absolutely superb. Yep. You know, so you come here, you get any result here, you deserve it. But I think, you know, and they've got a new manager, of yep. course, he's bringing two or three players in. Which shows that I mean he hasn't he hasn't dilly dallied, has no. he? He's come in and a couple of players have left. He's brought players in. Um, this year, if they can get a little bit of the the, the wave form a bit better, mm -hmm. they'll have no problem saying this league. Yeah, hopefully this is the turning point for Argyle in, in terms of away games. Um, Tommy, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to meet you and have you on Argyle TV. Stay here for just a second, although I I can't promise you won't get harassed by Pilgrim Pete again. Um, Tommy Tynan here on Argyle TV for us and there is a lot more build up to come after this.
well, as well as the launch of Forever Green, today is also the start of EFL Community Weekend. It's an EFL initiative aimed to show the breadth and depth of the club community work to match uh, to match going fans across the league. So local community heroes will be celebrated up and down the country. And these are Argyle's Magnificent Seven. It's been fantastic to work for the Trust this year, but at the same time, there's a lot of realization. Around the Christmas period, I've been delivering Christmas hampers. This year, I actually went to the doors of the people who were receiving them, and I took a hamper to one particular family and I wish them, I hope you have a lovely Christmas. And the response back was, we'll do our best. And I walked away and I just was just in floods of tears. Yeah, I'm, I'm delighted to be here to be able to recognize Steve for the fantastic work that he's done across the years. Uh, he's a very kind and generous man that, that donates a lot of his time into the programs that we run at the Trust, which is all voluntary. Al's, um, Al's been with us for, um, for a number of years now um, and held many roles in the football club. 25 years of running match day magic events and provisions enabling young people to get to you know, their first sight and first taste of, of football um, you know, is, is just one of the highlights in terms of that. Um, you know, so Karen in terms of what he does. I really enjoyed uh, doing what I'm doing. I just hope that the young coaches are all now involved realise how lucky they are to be doing a job. I think it's a privilege to give Scott the award. Um, he's a great asset to the women's club. Um, puts a lot of hard work and graft in to the club behind the scenes and uh, does it on a voluntary basis. So we're really grateful for all the work Scott does uh, behind the scenes for the football club. It's an honour to have uh, to, to have received the Community Hero uh, Award. And there's been some cracking volunteers that have helped at the club as well. Uh, people who've sort of inspired me as well as obviously hopefully the other way around as well in terms of what you can offer in terms of your spare time and what given that that time up helps uh, produce. Nothing's ever too much trouble for Rob. And that's what we really like about SW Law as a brand and Rob as a person. They want to get involved and they want to be part of giving back to local people, not just sponsoring or donoring stuff. They want to get involved, they want to get their hands dirty, and then also they want to see and feel where that money gets used afterwards. I went down to, to Plimpton, went and saw the wheelchair football team in action, and to see the sort of the money, you know, yeah, firsthand. It was great, the, the facilities, the equipment being used. Anyone would pay to put a smile on someone's face, so it was brilliant. I was delighted with that. There's no one better who deserves this award than Colin Bunny. His energy and enthusiasm shines through on a day-to-day -day basis. I wish we could bottle it up and sell it, um, uh, you know, because we'd make a lot of money off of that. It's a great feeling, to be fair. Somebody's got to give them attention. Someone's got to give them a chance. The main thing I've learned with dealing with the children, doing ball boys and girls, is the fact that um, I have a great responsibility for their development as growing children. When Pete retired from the police force, he started to work for us a little bit more kind of full on. We brought him on board to lead on a project called National Citizen Service. Pete was an incredible role model on that project. There are many, many young people and their families across the city today that would pinpoint Pete May as being the absolute primary and best part of that project and uh, because of that I think he's become a bit of a cult hero amongst young people in the city. To see some of the, the young people progress into having families of their own now. Uh, one instance is one person who was on there as a 16 year old on our first one in 2011. I met up with in Cyprus. He's got his own family, his own child. He's running his own business um, and that to me is, is the way that it worked. NCS worked in conjunction with Community Trust. Yeah, Debbie's been instrumental in making sure that we're able to access goods and, and items and instrumental in making sure that they're able to get to the people um, on their doorstep. We've managed to develop a network of partners and develop a network of, uh, of community members that are able to support us with that. And Being able to inspire children to, to re-look at, at their futures, for them to, to come back in a few years' time and say, because of... Project 35 and Ginsters and, you know, your Ginster chef, that inspired me to, to be a chef. I mean, that would, that would be the absolute icing on the cake.
some very worthy and kind-hearted people there. And I'm very pleased to say we've got two of them here with us now, Colin Bunny and Steve Aspinall. Hello both, and a big congratulations as well. What does it mean, I'll start with you, Colin, to be recognised in this way? I, I think it's a great honour. Um, there are many, many people in the Community Trust doing lots of really good work. And to be selected as one of those for an award, I'm, I feel very honoured. Yeah, and Steve, how, how about you? How does that feel? Yeah, I'm truly honoured to, to be receiving it. Like Colin says, there's some remarkable people within the Trust, uh, what they do and the difference which these people make. For me to be recognised, it, it, it's a big thing. I'm really, really proud. Yeah, well, well, Steve, give us a little overview then of the, the kind of work that you do in the community. Well, on a match day, I'm looking after the mascots, the young children. Uh, I also do a little bit of coaching for the children in the community, look after Plymouth Kicks. Uh, seeing some of those children develop over the years is, is quite remarkable. Uh, and also helping in, in the Project 35, which, again, the poverty which we've got in Plymouth uh, it, it's such a shame. So being able to help just a small part in that, you know, it, it means a lot. Yeah, I mean, you've listed off, you know, quite a few little things there. I think it just goes to show how much work the trust actually does do in the community. I, you know, it's on quite a big scale, isn't it? it? It certainly is. I mean, one of the reasons, well, the main reason I wanted to be part of the trust and to help is because people think that the trust is about football, but it's much more than football. Yeah. It's helping, you know, the, the homeless, the, 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 the lonely, disabled. Uh, we do so much for different parts of the, of the city, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, and people think it is football, and I just wanted to spread that word that, look, it's not football, you know, the Trust needs your help, it is a charity, uh, and I'm just a small part of that. Yeah, that, well, that's fantastic. Colin, if I can come back to you, you work with the ball assistants on match days. It must be a very rewarding job. It is. I've, I've been doing it, this is my 19th season. Wow. Um, I've been doing it a long time, certainly. But during the week, I do football in two primary schools mm -hmm. at the moment. I'm, I'm very pleased to say I work in two amazing schools, Lyra Green and Bickley Down. Yeah. So a little plug for those. <laughs> sure. And ball assistance, as I say, I've been doing it, this is my 19th season. And I've seen so many children come through, seen them as 11-year-olds, and said farewell to them when they're 17, 18, yeah. as young men and young girls, and it's been amazing. Yeah, I guess, you know, a testament to, you know, both of your work in the community to encourage that kind of spirit in the younger children so that it carries through all the way into adulthood, you know, that oh, passion. Absolutely. It's, it's, it gives me so much joy working with children from 5 to 11 in the schools and then with the older ones doing the ball assistance. Yeah. Now, I, I can appreciate it's getting very cold and windy and you both have far more important jobs than me. So I'm going to say thank you so much for joining me on Argyle TV and a huge congratulations again and thank you for all the work that you do. Colin and Steve here joining us much. on Argyle TV. And congratulations, of course, to the other five community heroes as well. Let's not forget about them. This is Argyle TV. We are building up to Argyle versus Cardiff and there's still plenty more to come after this. Let's get it poppin', I'm looking away. Go tell mother I'm cooking the game. Flow like water bubbling up when you want me to make. Taking you back in the day, feeling immaculate, mate. Action pack back to back while you yapping away. I got a knack to react, but I'm packing a grace. Up to the max, what a fact, let me grab the space. I had a map to place, who got a laugh for face? Long, long, and strong, looking like a stack full of hate. It goes on and on, way to the back of the bank. This phenomenon is on, I don't even have to say. I'm where I belong, this is no back in the, you know? I go where I want to, a fair warning for anybody with hair. Well, we are rattling through the guests this afternoon. I can barely keep up. I can just about remember today's game is, of course, Argyle against Cardiff. And it's the first league match that Ian Foster will have taken uh, charge of as Argyle head coach here at home. He has been in the job for two weeks now, and he's been very quick to get to work. We had a session on Tuesday that was um, perhaps we had to jiggle. So in a naval sound. Um, we had to um, overcome and adapt um, because of the the grass being rock hard. Um, but today we've moved training pitches. It was the sensible thing to do for, from a safety perspective, really. So we've managed to get a lot of work in on the grass today, which is great. Um, the two new boys, Alfie and, and, and Matthew, have been uh, welcomed and, and, and fitted in seamlessly today in the session, which, which again is lovely. 
Um, and, and we're in a really good place, you know, ahead of uh, our minus one session tomorrow. What are your thoughts on Cardiff? How do, you, how do you maybe see that game going? I think it'll be a really challenging and tough game. I think they've got, um, they pose a really a high attacking threat, you know. Um, they've got um, they've got pace in wide areas, inverted wide players, you can go either way. Um, they put an awful lot of crosses into your box. Um, they can play or they can go direct into in, in, and make it difficult for you uh, that way. So it's going to be challenging. The, you know, the, the, the positive thing for me is that they played so recently. Yeah. You know, I was able to study that game and um, and yeah, we know it's going to be a challenge, but one we're, we're, we're relishing, we're really looking forward to. I was going to ask you about that. I think it was just just about three weeks ago mm. that we we played each other. I know obviously you weren't here, and there has been change since. But with it being that close to each other. Mm. You, I suppose you can take a lot from that game coming yeah, into this. Yeah, absolutely. Not only from our plays, but from theirs. Um, so yeah, I've, like I say, I've studied that game and um, and others that they've had recently. And we know, we know. I don't think there's any. You don't go into a game thinking, "Oh yeah, we'll, we'll have an easy afternoon today." <laughs> the Cardiff will be no difference. It'll be it'll be a really challenging game. Yeah, and just finally, it'll be your first home league game. Yeah, um, we've, we've had a tremendous record here over the last few years. It, it's, it's continued again this year. You looking forward to that? Yeah, people have assured me that the FA Cup game was a quiet afternoon, so I'm expecting it to be quite raucous on Saturday, and, and, and can't wait to hear them. I think we all know it's been a pretty busy few weeks for the club here at Home Park. And we know Ian Foster wasn't here for the last match between Argyle and Cardiff, um, which was only three weeks ago, as we uh, discovered at the top of the show. But do you think it's a help that they've played so recently for Ian Foster? Yeah, I think it's nice that he's got that kind of uh, the video of that match to, to go back to yep. and have a look at both sides, I think, in, in that respect. Um, and yeah, it gives, gives him a chance to, to get to know the players that, that were up against Cardiff last time. As we said, Argyle, lots of changes, Cardiff slightly more settled squad but it, it can be helpful for I think a, a new head coach to have that to fall back on yeah and it's been a very busy window for transfers as well here at the club do you see Divine as a, a replacement for Azaz looking at it it'd be fantastic if he can mm -hmm. I mean obviously um, big boots to fill absolutely Azaz was you know fantastic for Argyle across his time here so yeah it's a it's a big challenge but you know one that I'm sure Argyle are, are hoping Divine can, can live up to it's a He's, he's hitting the ground running. He's been playing the season already in the football league, and obviously, you know, he must must have pedigree being at, at Tottenham and having been in the England youth setup as well. Clearly, that's a you know um, a big accolade for for a young player to have. So, yeah, I think what better way to to start your career than a, a good performance? And the, the thing about football, you, you soon forget about previous players. I yeah. think if you it, if a new player comes in and, and does a good job so yeah hopefully we already mentioned that that relationship amongst the front, front three that will be important today yeah. so hopefully we can see that and and we're seeing you know midfield and defensive reinforcements as well with with his other choices definitely I think the depth of squad is, is, is vital for Argyle you know the, the step up to the championship is a huge one um, bringing in those reinforcements particularly when you when you've lost players and and that disruption in the squad from perhaps lone lone players going back when when they were unexpected losses is is difficult to deal with, but you, you can't complain with the, the way the club have approached that. They obviously had uh, targets in mind and they've moved quickly to, to replace the players. And, and, you know, I don't think they're, they're done with their work in the transfer window yet. So it's good to see. Yeah, and, and you look at the kind of players that Ian Foster's bringing in. We know his experience um, with younger players. And then just when you think you've got a read on him, he brings in someone like Forshaw, who's got that experience that is also going to be very beneficial to Argyle. Yeah, the, that balance is, is crucial. You know, Argyle have shown themselves to be a club where they want to give opportunities to young players and, uh, you know, want to be a, an exciting, entertaining club. But at the same time, We've mentioned several times this year, this, this championship is a, is a tough, tough league and someone with the experience of Forshaw, I think, will be a nice uh, kind of steadying bit of experience. I'm sure he'll do plenty of organising and communicating in that midfield area and that will be you know, a vital asset to Argyle, I think. Yeah, well, we'll see him take to the pitch today, so that will be a really interesting one to keep an eye on. And while Argyle may have a new man in charge, Cardiff's manager has been there since the start of the season and he and midfielder Josh Bowler are hoping they can turn their recent bad form around. We played them a few weeks ago at home here. We should win that game, my opinion. It was uh, the second goal where we conceded was a little bit unlucky. 
twice in a row uh, the same play was sh uh, shooting. So even our squad it's now less, and we we don't have uh, many players. Uh, we should go there uh, to Plymouth to to take the three points only to focus on three points. So it's it's possible to to do it uh, with the squad what we have right now. We will do everything for that uh, to get the three points at uh, Plymouth. It's it's a lot of games, um, especially around this Christmas period. We know it's going to be a a tricky period. Yeah, it's not gone the way we wanted it to go. Uh, obviously, we would have liked to pick up more wins and and maybe some better performances. Um, but we're still we're still there. We're still just just outside the playoffs. Um, still got half a season left, so we've still got to be positive. Um, it's still in our in our in our grasp. So. Um, Going back to your old point, we, we, we're trying to stay positive in the camp because nothing, nothing's out of reach yet, um, so we just got to keep pushing. I'm always pushing my players, uh, the team forward, what I have in the, the what, so what quality we have, we, we will push till the end to, to stay close and, uh, and push my players also for that. They, they did, uh, my opinion, till now, great job, great job and they will do a great job till end of the season. Uh, those players what we have and our fans uh, is doing great things they are supporting us everywhere okay sometimes maybe they don't like the results but uh, this is the what we uh, this is the situation with the, with the injuries and with the less squad what we had so we cannot change it is the financial things sometimes i cannot change it so i have to accept it how it is so and try to uh, do my best uh, for Cardiff city I, I, I would tell my team always, we will, we will push till the end to give everything. And at the end, we will see what comes out. We will, we will not give up. Do you think it's fair to say that Cardiff have hit a little bit of a sticky patch at this point in the season, Ian? I think when you look at the run of results, you know that's a, it's a fair description. I'm sure the, the manager will accept that as well. Um, but as we've mentioned, to the fact that they've been through perhaps that slightly sticky spell, but still find themselves in the position they are in the league, mm -hmm. does show you what a, a kind of strong season they perhaps have had up to that point. Um, yeah. So it's really important for Argyle. You know, we know that this home ground, home park, has been fantastic for, for us over the last couple of years. It's important to get back to that, uh, you know, the fortress mentality that this yes. is where we get our three points. And you know, clubs we want clubs to fear coming here and really be, um, you know unsure about what they're going to expect when they get here and, and Argyle will look to do that today I'm sure. Yeah absolutely and you know while they might be struggling a little bit in front of goal Cardiff of course um, I think you know coming here to home park yes it will hopefully be a very formidable atmosphere for them but even if you take away you know just this fixture today they're still very much within the, the playoff mix. Yeah they absolutely are and I think something we haven't mentioned perhaps so far this is as, as much for Argyle, a local derby as we almost get, you know, just yeah. yes, the, the Brist Bristol City are in the league this year. But I mean, the, the away crowd is absolutely, yeah. big, big yeah. turnout. Um, certainly, we had a season, I think it may well have been the season that, that Brian did that cross for, for the header earlier on, that um, that was our local derby. So, you know, that that, that does add a bit of spice. As, as you said, that, that away end today is, is looking you know, well packed already and I'm sure there'll be a fantastic atmosphere inside here. Yeah, we are, we are certainly looking towards a very busy home part this afternoon. As me and Ian have mentioned, the away side is massive. Argyle's crowd, of course, is massive. -er. <laughs> and we will have the final bit of build up coming up next. I ain't gonna lie to you. Life's got fucking life in. And I need a night or two. To get me unwinding I feel like I'm stuck in cycles every day Come and get me out this loop So just switch it up for me It's time to get loose If we disconnect We ain't gotta be in line We can't redirect Everything that's on our minds Let it go Change up your frequency Time to get a reminder of the team news now then on the proviso that my team sheet doesn't blow away because the weather is picking up here at Homebark as per usual. 
The Argyle lineup for you this afternoon. Connor Hazard, Barley Mumba, Dan Scar, Ryan Hardy, Morgan Whitaker, Mikel Miller, Alfie Devine, Darko JB, Brendan Galloway, Ashley Phillips and Adam Forshaw. And on the bench, Burton, Houghton, Plegathwello, Edwards, Wright, Bundu, Randall, Wayne and Soranola. Another new addition uh, into Argyle squad there at the bottom with number 29, Matthew Soranola. Yeah, I think it's an exciting signing. He's, he, again, has played plenty of games at this level. Has, has played under Ross, Russell Martin in you know, Swansea's side when he has implemented a you know, possession-based style that Argyle have become familiar with in, in recent times. So, again... Nice to see him added to the squad and hopefully we get to see a bit of him today. Yeah, and Cardiff are our opposition. So their starting lineup looks a little bit like this with Alnwick, Gautas, McGuinness, Wintle, Grant, Collins, Mate, Colwell, Tanner, Rinamota and NG. Ian, anyone out of their you know, starting eleven that you think fans should really be keeping an eye on? Well, I think that, you know that we're expecting them to set up in a 4-3-3. So certainly Grant and Tanner will be up in that in that forward three. Colwell, we mentioned earlier on, he's a young player come through Cardiff's academy, and and he'll be looking to get forward from that midfield area. So it'll be interesting, as always, to see how the the two kind of tactical approaches play out, as, as and we'll get to know more as, as the game starts. Yeah, and I think today will also be really interesting to see how those new players for Argyle gel together on the pitch. You know, in a league match. Definitely. We talked that the players that Ian Foster knows well, they've worked under him before. So I'm sure that, that continuity, if you like, that understanding of the way he wants to approach games will stand him in good stead. And in terms of welcoming him to Argyle, you know, this is the, 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 the existing players can obviously let them know the expectations of the club and I'm sure they'll hit the ground running in that respect. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've got just enough time before kick-off now to get some final thoughts from the Argyle camp and it's Kevin Nanskerville who has been speaking with Charlie Price. Nance, talk us, talk us through the, t the team, the changes. Yeah, um, so a few changes. Uh, I think the big news would probably be two home debuts um, for Ash and Darko after last week's debut and then two full debuts for Adam and Alfie. Yeah, OK, so they're four out of the five new signings start. Yeah. It's just seen that, that Matty Soranola's on the bench as well, so all five included. Sure. Have you have you briefed them what home park's going to be like today? Certainly have, yeah. No, they're, they're looking forward to it, they're excited, so uh, hopefully we can have a great afternoon. It's it's always an interesting time, January, with, with players in and out and what have you. So how, how well have they sort of integrated into, into the group, considering a few of them have only been here a matter of... Of days. Yeah, well, Adam obviously only came in uh, yesterday, so that's been a bit of a whirlwind for him. But he's very experienced, as we all know, so he'll take that in his stride, I'm sure. And the other lads have uh, seemed to have settled in really well. Um, we're, I think we're a welcoming football club. We're quite easy to understand and to get on, so um, it, the transition seems to have been very smooth. On today's game, we, we played Cardiff just three weeks ago. Um, how much does that game have a bearing on, on this one? Um, I think, well, obviously, we've both got good um, knowledge of each other, so that will have an impact. But it's another game, it's a different game. No two games are the same. So um, we know what's coming, and I'm sure they're aware of our strengths and weaknesses as well. And we always end on this, but home form has been good, unbeaten since October. Yeah. Would, would like a win, though? considering the draws we've had here recently? Yeah, definitely. Always want to win. Three points are huge for us. Um, we'll do whatever we can to get them and we'll see what happens. Just over 10 minutes now until kick-off here at Home Park where Argyle take on Cardiff. We've got enough time to have a quick look at some of the other games that have been played today. Of course, Sunderland played Hull yesterday and an early kickoff in South Wales ended. Swansea won, Southampton three. Southampton on very good form at the moment. Norwich and West Brom are in a bit of a playoff battle, meeting at Carrow Road. And Sheffield Wednesday hosts an in-form Coventry. Ian, the... the league just keeps moving and changing doesn't it yeah it does you mentioned Southampton they're obviously looking looking really strong at the moment mm -hmm. certainly you know the resources of those clubs that have been in the Premier League recently uh, is a, it's a great advantage at this level so it's perhaps no surprise to see them them doing so well along with Leicester at the top of the league yeah lots lots to watch we will of course be bringing you the scores again at halftime and at the end of the match so we can see how everyone else is getting on and hopefully bring you some big scores from Argyle here at home park 
And with that, it's pretty much ready for us to hand over here on Argyle TV. The flags are going up, the fans are ready, and the music is a pumping. So if you haven't got your match pass, now is very much the time to do so. They can be bought over on the website, pafc.co.uk. Get over there now and buy one so you can be part of all of the action here at Home Park. It's Charlie Price and Katie Middleton standing by for Coventry today. Ian's going to be with me again throughout the rest of the match. Ian, thank you for braving the cold and standing here pitch side uh, so far. We'll leave it at that. Hand over to Charlie and Katie and see you at half time. So it is Argyle v Cardiff up next. 